this year to the Dallas Zoo is the National Geographic Photo Art, featuring dozens of stunning pictures from acclaimed photographer Joel Sartori. Main ticket booths of the Dallas Zoo. Hey everybody, Tom here for Beyond Walt Disney Planet. I am checking out the Dallas Zoo today. As you might have guessed, it's in Dallas, Texas. So lots of animals to see. We're gonna check this place out. Let's go. It's a pretty good sized zoo. It's separated by two sections, Wilds of Africa and Zoo North. I'm at Zoo North right now. So I'm gonna check out different animals that they have. All right, well, they have a lot of their birds all together in the same type of habitat, from black neck swans all the way down to the Caribbean flamingos. So we're gonna go look at some at the moment. Or this bird called a southern screamer from South America. Got a blue and yellow macaw. You got some Caribbean flamingos down at the water. They get their pink color from the food that they eat. Get a little better view of their habitat. Lots of swans enjoying the water. Having a bite to eat, perhaps. We've got another sign with some additional bird information. This is the same habitat. These three on the ground here are eastern brown pelicans. Now if you live near water, especially near any of the oceans or major lakes, you've probably seen pelicans hunting for fish. Got some of our ducks down below, napping. This one's got a blue beak. That's kind of cool. Got a couple of vultures. They got their food all ready for them. These are rats. And yes, they are deceased. Birds gotta eat. These are hooded vultures. Anybody who's seen the old Bugs Bunny cartoons? These birds look familiar. They fly around eating dead animals. Clean up carcasses on the side of roads. In the back is a harpy eagle from South America. Bird here with the white head is a African fish eagle. And this giant bird is a, called an Indian condor. Condors are the biggest birds. Got a wingspan of 11 feet. That's a pretty big bird. And this majestic bird is the bald eagle, symbol of the United States of America. Right, the bird down here right by the wall, I think he's a little camera shy, but it's called a red-legged Sarima. From South America. He saw me get the camera out and he ran away, or tried to hide. But I still see ya. Gonna see a couple Galapagos tortoises. There's some big tortoises. Just roaming around. Roaming, hanging out in the shade, eating some grass. Hey, baby. Hey. See some giant ant eaters. There's one here. Wreath hornbills. Right here in the foliage eating. Got lots of nice coloring around their beak. These are Megori storks from South America. Also have wood storks in the same enclosure. At the top of the enclosure I see a red squirrel. We don't get gray squirrels back at home, but it's a red squirrel. See, the anteaters are all along the fence looking for a snack. His name suggests to eat ants and other insects. Kind of weird, these things are going to me of a dog. 
Big tail on the back. Really cute looking. Whoever owns this Mustang's having a bad day. They got a big dinosaur on top of it. Look at that. Wow. So kids train ride. Takes you around. Little area. Models of different dinosaurs. All along this little trail. Little train ride's called a T-Rex Express. Really cool otter habitat. All sorts of running streams, place for them to climb on, lots of water. The otters are hiding right now, so can't see any right now. They might be inside or just curled up somewhere napping. The tiger habitat. So coming out. Very pretty animals. Coming to get a closer look or come out of hiding. This is the opposite end of the tiger enclosure. It's a nice water to rest in. So it's a really good sized enclosure. It's one of the nicer tiger enclosures that I've seen at, at any zoo. This looks more of a natural habitat for the animals. If you ever wonder what a tiger looked like on the inside, particularly at skeleton, well, there you go. This is a Siberian tiger skeleton. And right down below are white napped cranes. I'm right, gonna check out some primates now. So are black and white Columbus monkeys. One here with its back to the camera. It's a Bolivian gray TT monkey. A white cheat gibbon. Couple Central American spider monkeys. Look at them hanging down. Coming on down. They go check out the Australian exhibit, the koala walkabout. One of the koala bears. Right next to the eucalyptus leaves that they love to eat. There's another koala bear. It says koalas have a special. See a few emu right over laying on the ground in the shade. Emus are related to the ostrich. It's enclosures for the laughing kookaburra. Now I can hear him. He's inside this log. See his tail feathers sticking out. Because he's munching away on some insects perhaps. All right, these guys are Western Gray Kangaroo. It's behind glass, so I apologize if there's any reflection. Then go check out the lorikeet landing. It's one of the birdies right here, coming right up to me. Hi. What's up, baby? Now people can choose to feed these birds. Yeah. Is that sweetheart? All right, these little guys are called white-faced sacky monkeys. All right. This one's picking bugs off the other one, looks like. Grooming each other is uh, part of their social circle, I guess you would call it. All right, they got a children's zoo also. Got a koi pond. Oh, there's some food in there. Get really, really close to these guys. Normally you don't get to see them this close. You can almost reach out and pet them, but you're not allowed to. Well, you're not supposed to anyway. Got some little piggies. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Never seen pigs this color, kind of orange and black. 
Very cute. Cute little piggy snouts. Another piggy. So it looks like a pot bellied pig. No signs up to say what kind of animals they are, but looks for like a pot bellied pig. A few cows. Ignore that fertilizer behind that other cow, okay? This beautiful bird is called a great horned owl. It's trying to sleep. All right, most children's zoos are going to have barnyard type animals. You know, cows and then uh, pigs, and of course you can have the chickens. It's the chicken coop. What's up, Chicky? Hi, chicken. I'm sorry I don't know your name, but you know, I'll, I'll just call you chicken. That good? Any second said no. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Got a couple different types of chickies in here. Got three little duckies over here. Looking for some grubs. And here's our goats. There's a woolly sheep right behind the black goat. There he goes, he's getting up. Must have heard me talking about him. Yeah, what's up, sheepy? Where's all your fur at? Yeah, he's been sheared for the summer. People can choose to get inside this enclosure and pet the goats. All right, hand wash stations are always around yeah. with animals that you can pet. It's always good to wash your hands after touching animals. There's the bird enclosure at the children's zoo area. Other places have lorikeets. This has numerous different types of birds. Looking right at us. This is Makoa. We got a bunch of cockatiels. Yeah, a couple of them, different colors. These other birds up here in the higher part of the tree. And this area called Lemur Lookout. Got a black and white lemur. Right down below. You see the ringtail lemurs. If I zoom in a little bit, oh, there's a couple ones right there. There we go. All right, they got a really cool carousel for kids of all ages. Lots of different animals, as well as prehistoric beasts. I'm going to be heading into the wilds of Africa section of the park. This section of the park is the largest of the two. It also has a monorail that goes around the perimeter, which I will be riding. Let's do a tunnel, basically underneath the bridge, the roadways above us. All along the walls, we have pictures of different animals. This is an Arctic fox. Tell me it's not the cutest little thing you've ever seen. Awesome. Here we go. Welcome to the wilds of Africa. Let's go see what we can find. All right, first up, the African penguin. See one of them up near the waterfall. Mostly they're in the water swimming. And there's maybe two or three in the water. This is called a mandrel. There's a lot of reflection on this glass. We can see his colorful nose. What is he eating? With the blue and the red. You go check out the giants of the savannah. You see the African elephants. Got the baby with the mommy, looks like, on the right. They typically only house females together unless you're trying to breed. The elephants have great habitat. This is their little swimming hole. Elephants in the back. 
There's also a secondary enclosure with additional elephants. Which has big animals that got to have big habitats. So this would be the main habitat. I guess the other one was a little smaller viewing area. All sorts of things to keep these elephants occupied. These are the skull of an elephant. Upper, upper the skull, and this is the lower jawbone. Now I was given some interesting information from one of the keepers here. I asked why they had teeth down below what would be the gum line. Now I was told that elephants have six sets of teeth through their lifetime. These teeth wear down, and as they wear down, these teeth behind start to grow up. And as they grow up, the teeth in the front flake off. So they're constantly growing new teeth all throughout their lifetime. Got the giraffes. The zoo offers a giraffe feeding area for an additional fee, of course. All proceeds go to help feed the animals. These are little kid giraffes. You can see people feed the giraffes lettuce. They stick their long tongues out that are kind of a little bit slimy and take it right out of their hand. Kind of cool experience. A little better view. You got two of the cheetah down for nap time. Again, I apologize for the glare on the glass. I can't do anything about that. But you can see that it's nap time for them. Like most cats, he spent a good portion of the day sleeping. Found the warthogs. Over here snoozing. It's about noon time, so I guess this is nap time for a lot of the animals. Okay, checking out the lion habitat. Looking for it. That's way in the back here. And try and get a good view. I'm sorry if it's shaky, but that is the lion snoozing in the shade. That's where I would be if I was a furry kitty cat. And I'm sorry it's moving around. It's hard to keep focus when it's so far away. I'm going to go down the gorilla trail, see what we can find. Hopefully some gorillas. I'd be a little upset. A Western lowland gorilla. Hanging out in the shade. And you got this one right here, lady. Watching us, watching her. Being in zoo, they have a lot of information about the different animals and their enclosures, their habitats, where they are native from. Their species meaning not necessarily the animal themselves. A lot of them are bred in captivity. So just taking a nap. Got his hands up over his eyes. This cool bird is called a wattled crane. Does kind of like a a chicken thing with its beak hanging down below it. Kind of interesting looking bird. Here across the Nile crocodile. I see two of them. There might be more, but that's the two that I see at the moment. The chimpanzee forest. It's got a nice looking habitat. One thing I noticed between this zoo and other zoos I've been to, this zoo has a lot of more vegetation in their enclosures. Which I think it looks more of a natural habitat versus just plain rocks and stuff. Okay, 
A group of them together. <coughs> this cute little thing's called a rock hyrex. Isn't he cute? Sleeping again. Or not really sleeping, he's got his eyes open. Some leopard tortoises. Plus you got the slender tailed meerkats. We saw Pumbas before, these are the Timons of the animals. Yeah. If you're familiar with the Lion King, of course. Look at that. Oh man, they are so cute and fuzzy. I just want to pick them up and pet them. But they probably bite me. They probably bite me though. What's up buddy? Hi. So a marabou stork. Multiple different species of storks are in this zoo. It's just another one. All right, gonna be checking out the Simmons Hippo Outpost. This is a representation of a real outpost at a camp in Africa. A little set up tents. Keep the insects off of them. This is the loading area for the monorail, which I will be taking after I check out the rest of the animals. Gives you a nice aerial view, a little bit off the ground anyway. But this is the newest area of the zoo, the hippo habitat. You see all the nice new wood and concrete. The Highland Hippo Hut, so where I'm heading to. Nice little enclosure. You have a TV monitor with different information about the hippo. Stuff still has a fresh paint smell. Just to give you an idea of the size of a hippo. You can see it right here. Now despite the name of the video, not video game, board game, Hungry Hungry Hippos, these guys do not eat marbles. They eat lettuce, but in the wild they can eat other animals. They can be very, very dangerous. And there they are under the water. These guys can hold their breath a good long time. There's a viewing area. You can see the underwater area of the enclosure. They're back a little far, so you can't see them from this vantage point. But you can see their nice big enclosure that they have. A little Bugs, possum salad, or opossum. Fruits, all sorts of kinds of things. And uh, like I said, she gets a really wide variety here. She gets a little bit of some greens. She also gets. See the monorail that I will be riding momentarily. Gives you a nice vantage point to give you lots of information about the different animals. I'm going to go get in line now. All right. Wilds of Africa Adventure Safari monorail ride coming up. Okay, there is an additional fee of $5 to ride the monorail. But since it helps the animals, I think it's well worth it. Got a nice boardwalk. Takes you up to the platform. Be on it next. These cool looking birds. Right along the boardwalk, I noticed. Got these really neat looking afros on top. What's up, bud? Really cool how this loads. Be on car two. My name is Michelle. We have a our guide for today. Now, who is ready to go on safari today? No one's ready to go on safari today. Okay, we can just stop the train then. That's fine. <laughs> I want to hear it, guys. Who's ready to go on safari today? Yeah, that's much better. Thank you. All right. Well, what's the My name is Michelle. We do have a couple rules that we gotta go over first before we can start the fun. So let's 
let's get those out of the way. Rule number one, we're going to remain seated. Wherever you are sitting right now is the seat for your entire safari. So keep that squishy tushy seated for the entire time. Number two, we're going to keep everything inside of the train car at all times. So no reaching out over the front. We've got some pretty aggressive foliage. We don't want you to get bushwhacked. As well, we want to make sure that everything stays on our side, including oh, maps, cell phones, children, sunglasses. Keep it all on our side of the train wild. car. Uh, but now that we've got that out of the way, this is going to help out a We are so excited, guys. This is a pretty new habitat. You maybe you didn't know what you did. But we do have our two hippos here. The first in 16 years at Dallas Zoo. Okay. The large one there is Adama. Adama is six years old. And then Boy Pello is our female, and she is 10 years old. You'll also see our Okapi as we pass by. This is a pretty cool opportunity to get close up with these animals. Uh, usually Okapi are pretty shy. But you guys are very yeah, lucky so in that cool. we have Love two that. different I areas that you can do our Okapi. And the Okapi yeah, is actually most related, related, to related, related to giraffes. They are not really that related to zebras. A lot of people think they are because of the patterns on their tushes, but that is not the truth. As we head into northern Africa, You'll be able to see the owl dad first. That's the Barbary sheep as well. So it's got three different types of okay, And then we've got the Nubian ibex right here. These guys with the super big horns that kind of look like they've got bumps on them. And the Nubian ibex is well known for those horns. They can actually weigh about 40 pounds total. Ibex, you need a pretty strong neck for that. And both of these animals have what are called concave hooves. That's basically like having suction cups on your feet. It's going to make it a lot easier for them to get around on those steep slopes and rocky ledges in the mountains where they live. We're entering Samburu National Reserve. You'll be able to see one of our females at the second rocky area here. And I believe our male is going to be right behind the first big rocky area. So as we come by the termite mounds, take a look to your left and you'll be able to see him. He's a lot darker than our females. And he also has a big flap of skin underneath his neck. It's called a dewlap. And that's something that only the males have. Now, the eland is the largest antelope in all of Africa. That does mean that they are pretty slow, though, unfortunately. <laughs> These guys can only hit about 20 miles an hour, yes only. But when you think about it, their predators are a lot faster than that. So they've got to have another way to protect themselves. So what they do is they jump. They can jump from a standing position eight feet into the air. <laughs> That's pretty impressive, and it's going to startle those predators and make it much easier for them to get that quick getaway. But don't worry, guys. They always land on their feet. Probably. Like cats. And I will just remind everybody that we got to remain seated for the entire safari today. I hear you. The animals make sense. Our next stop on safari is home to Rufus and Reggie. These are spur-winged geese. They do have spurs on their wings, but they're actually not geese. They are ducks. But they use those spurs kind of in the shoulder area of the wing to protect themselves against predators. Which, speaking of, as we round the corner into the next habitat, look all the way down in the right-hand corner, all the way up, almost under your nose, you'll be able to see two ferocious looking predators. 
Okay, maybe they look like house cats to you guys, but that doesn't make them any less dangerous. These guys can do some catastrophic damage. They're able to take down prey three times their size, and they can jump over 10 feet into the air and grab birds out of flight. These guys are no-nonsense predators, definitely not your average house cat. They're also pretty well known for those ears. You might notice they've got little black tufts on top of them. And that is what careful means. It means black tipped ear. You may be able to hear it before you can see it, but our next stop on safari is the Great Rift Valley. This is massive geological wonder created by shifting fault lines and Gorgeous waterfalls, rivers, valleys, lakes, and grasslands, and it makes a home for over 400 species of mammals and over a thousand species of birds. You may be able to peek through the brush after this first overhanging tree to see our bongo. I know it's not a great view, but I'd like to point them out because sometimes when they're at the back of their habitat here where we can see them, we won't be able to see them from the front area. So just keep that in mind. But you can see one of our African crowned cranes right before the sunlit area of the back portion of the habitat. These guys are named after those big crowns of feathers on top of their head. You will also see a Stanley crane through the brush there. They're the ones with the really long tail feathers. And then right up front is the Demoiselle crane. Well, not right right up front, but closer to the water. And then, of course, right up front, we've got our great white pelicans. These guys can hold three to four gallons of fish and water inside of their mouth at a time. That was a cool view. Now also keep in mind if you're listening to the commentary from the driver, she is in car one, we're in car two. So at times, by the time she describes it, we've already passed the animal. You did also see one bird right before we went under the waterfall. That is the white stork. They're also known as European storks. But with all of this life in the Great Rift Valley, you need something to keep it all around, and that's where water. We can do our part to make a better world for animals and people just by making sure we are taking care of our water systems. By not polluting, picking up our trash, and as well, even turning the water off while we're brushing our teeth is going to help out all kinds of animals and it's also going to help out your water bill and can i get a yes to that we're coming into the slopes of mount kenya and it does look like we will be able to see some of our bongo once we get to the middle of the habitat look to the left and you'll be able to see him right up against the perimeter there these animals are gorgeous with that beautiful chestnut color, but one thing that is not beautiful about the whole situation of the bongo is that they are critically endangered. These animals only have about 100 left in the wild. That would be like a bongo for every person on this train car, and that's it. But Dallas Zoo is working very hard with other facilities all around the country to help these and other endangered animals. We participate in what's called an SSP, or Species Survival Plan. This is kind of like Match.com for our animals. It gives us a look at who goes best with who and who would have the healthiest babies. We've been able to save species from extinction using these breeding plans. And this is one of those species. This is the scimitar horned oryx, considered extinct in the wild in the 80s. They are now back in their natural habitats. These guys in particular 
had a kind of council that came together and they said, hey, let's get these guys back out there. And we took animals that were bred and, uh, and kind of put through a, a how to be a wild scimitar horned oryx class <laughs> and then they made their way back into the place. wild. So pretty amazing stuff. Uh, they are doing very well too. They've actually had several babies in the group and they're expanding their range, which is fantastic. It's exactly what we want to see. So there's even talk about releasing another group into the wild. This is another is endangered antelope. Uh, this is the Addicts. Behind the Addicts, though, you'll see the Gemsbach. And as well, we have another one that's eating right to the right of them. The Gemsbach is a fast-moving and aggressive antelope that can actually take on lions with those horns. That beautiful face in the next habitat is our lapid face vulture. And then as well, we've got two more African crowned cranes in there. There's actually two subspecies of African crown crane, the gray crown crane and the black crown crane. So you just saw the black crown crane. And over in our Great Rift Valley area, we have our gray crown cranes. Look all the way to the back of our next habitat to see the Nyala. These animals follow baboon troops around and will eat all of the fruit and different types of foliage that fall out of the trees as the baboons move through it. This is a way for them to get a little bit of extra oomph in their diet and as well some sweet treats every once in a while. But the next portion of our safari you'll definitely need your safari guide in front of you for. That's right on the center portion of your console. Take a look at all the animals on there because we're going to see a lot of them. The first one that we'll see is the Thompson's gazelle who's laying down. The one standing up with a long neck is a Cherinook. And Cherinook means giraffe neck in Swahili. Huh. You'll see one of our Maribu storks is actually sitting on a nest right now. She's right at the split where the river kind of uh, splits in half there. All the way at the back, you'll be able to see our Somali wild owl, another critically endangered species. And then, of course, all around our habitat, we do have marabou storks. And then right at the front, before you leave the Serengeti, you'll be able to see the Speaks gazelle. This is the second fastest land animal in the world. You guys know what the fastest is? Unfortunately for the Speaks gazelle, <laughs> it's the cheetah. Yeah, cheetahs can hit top speeds at about 70 miles an hour. And the only real predator of these Speaks gazelles when it comes to running is the cheetah. But Speaks gazelles have a pretty fantastic way of making sure that everybody knows there's danger around. They can actually inflate a portion of their nose. When they let the air out, it makes a honking sound. And that honking sound is going to tell all those animals, hey, be careful, there's something going on here. You might want to start running. This is my favorite area here at Dallas Zoo. I'm a big fan of chimpanzees. We do have three generations of chimps here at Dallas Zoo. Our youngest is Mashindi. You may or may not have seen him running around and being a crazy person. That's because he is a three-year-old. And let me just tell you, if you have a three-year-old or you've ever had one, you know exactly what Mom Ramona is doing with right now. I always suggest you guys go and see them up a little bit closer. I love watching them for more than, you know, a couple minutes out of the day. Um, a lot of people spend not too much time around each of our habitats here. But I always suggest you guys pick at least one animal that you really like and sit there for 5-10 minutes. You'll actually be able to see some really stuff. Now we're passing over the Nile River, everybody be careful. There are two Nile crocodiles in there. 
they're pretty big too. We actually have one named Monster because he's over a thousand pounds. But don't let that impress you too much because Nile crocodiles are the largest predator in all of Africa, weighing in at a total of 2,000 pounds when they are an adult size. These animals can also eat one wildebeest and then be satiated for an entire year. So they won't really eat anything until that great migration. Remember when we talked about that? That means great amounts of food in the area. So these guys are going to wait and wait and wait. They are ambush predators. They're very good at waiting, much better than me. So they wait there, and then once they find something that they can get their jaws on, they will, boom, grab it super fast. I was just talking about that a couple weeks ago. But it is getting misty here. Looks like we're moving into the mountains of Rwanda. You'll be able to see our gorillas, or not, I don't know, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> I haven't seen them yet. But if you want a better view of them, definitely take our gorilla trail. There is a lot of areas that you can go to to see them up close and personal. Um, definitely over by our bachelor group. So after you go by our research station, go in that little kind of tunnel looking thing. Um, you'll probably see Juba there. Juba is one of our bachelor males and he does like to, at least seems like he likes to hang out near the windows and uh, he'll make faces at you. He's a pretty cool dude. But uh, I did mention that we do have two separate groups of gorillas. Uh, so the first one you'll see when you go into our gorilla trail is our family group. And that's headed up by Subira, the dominant male. And we do actually have a new friend in there. So Hope is a new gorilla that just joined the rest of our gorillas on Habitat there. And hopefully she'll be able to add the family portion to that family group. But you also will know that we do have bachelors here and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a bunch of teenage males hanging out together and making trouble. The testosterone is amazing in that group. So you can imagine the kinds of things that go on. So, but that's something they do in the wild. They'll actually get kicked out of their family groups. And they will go off and make their own bachelor groups until they're ready to make their family groups. We also are passing by the mandrels. I always suggest you guys go and see our mandrels. We do have two of our three mandrels that tend to be up at the window, and it seems as though they like to kind of scare you guys. <laughs> they seem to like the reaction and find it reinforcing, especially when they scare little kids. So <laughs> a word to the wise, if you have little kids that get scared very easily, you might not want to put them right up against the window. But Jacks and Obi are pretty cool animals. You'll notice that Jax is actually very, very bright in color. That's because he's the dominant male. Once a male becomes the dominant male, he gets a flush of testosterone. That's going to brighten up all of the colors on him and make him grow a little bit faster. But as we head into the station, I'll just remind everybody to remain seated until those doors open. I want to thank you guys for coming on Safari with me today. A part of your ticket today actually helps our animals out in the wild. So we have a fund called the Wild Earth Conservation Fund, and part of your ticket went towards that. That's helping animals all around the world. Cheetahs, elephants, flamingos. You mean it, we probably are supporting it out there in the wild. And that's because Dallas Zoo wants to make a better world for animals everywhere, not just here at the Dallas Zoo. So you guys have contributed to that, so thank you so much. All right, guys, that was a full loop. Make sure you got. All right, Zoo Fari Market Adventure Shopping is the zoo's gift shop. And naturally, you're going to have all your different animals stuffed. You can get a pink elephant. Additional stuffed animals or plush as they call them. You get two of them for 32 bucks. Get an iguana or an alligator. Animal masks. You've got bags of animals you can get. 
Did you saw a Zoo Wars shirt. That's kind of cool. Additional different types of shirts and hats. called critters of Dallas zoos different animals that they have here little small figurines for $9.99 each well, we also have a multitude of different books about animals for kids coloring books other activity books all educational and lollipops and soft drinks and also fruit snacks or gummies. Large plush animals behind the counter for $18.99. Various African themed items, bongos and different animals. Might like to get yourself one of these stuffed gorillas. Smaller ones are $39 or you get this great big one for $150. What a deal, huh? All right, guys, I hope you liked my little visit to Texas's Dallas Zoo. Now, price-wise to get in was about $15, and parking is $8. That is not per person, that's $8 per car load. So don't panic as far as that goes. If you do choose to do the monorail, which I recommend, it takes you around to some habitats you do not normally get to see. If you're not on the monorail, that's an additional $5. As stated earlier, the money does go to help out the zoo and the animals that they help and rehabilitate and all the other animals that call the zoo their home. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think of the different videos that I'm doing and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.